Hello architects and welcome to another video on building serverless applications on AWS with .NET. In this video today, you're going to learn about the magical world of generative AI. You're going to add some generative AI to your .NET applications using Amazon Bedrock. If you're not familiar with Amazon Bedrock, Amazon Bedrock is a new AWS service that went GA just a couple of weeks ago and it provides you a set of foundational models that you can use to add Gen AI to your application quickly, easily, and using just simple API calls. And you're gonna learn all about how you can do that in this video in the next 10 minutes. Let's get started. If you like this channel, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscribe. So if you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, ding that notification bell. It would mean so much to me. Thank you very much. Now let's start by having a look at what you're actually going to build. And I've got two examples for you here. One that's simple, one that's slightly more complex. First example is just a Lambda function with API gateway in front of it that's going to make a call to Bedrock. And you can just pass in any old prompt and Lambda will call Bedrock and give you the response back. So in the name of a YouTube channel making videos about serverless using .NET, make that call, the response will come back from the LLM once the full response has been received. Nice and simple, request goes in, response comes back. The second example I have for you is slightly more complex. This is an application I've built to actually suggest topics that I can actually use on my YouTube channel because sometimes I think, ah, I wanna make a video about DynamoDB and maybe advanced DynamoDB use cases, and I don't actually know where the best place to start with that is. So I've built this little application when I can say I want some advanced DynamoDB. Hit the suggest button, and this is gonna send a request off to a backend, asynchronously make calls to Bedrock, and then stream the response back to the front-end application. And you can see the response is coming back here. It's being written like you're familiar with using any of the Gen AI use case. And it's suggesting how to optimize scans and queries, how to implement transactions in DynamoDB, quite a useful one, actually. And the third one is using DynamoDB streams for data replication. There we are, three advanced use cases of DynamoDB generated in real time using Amazon Bedrock. Let's have a look at how all of this works. Here I am in Ride. Now, this is the first example of the simple Lambda function that's making calls to Bedrock. This is a really simple Lambda function that uses a Lambda annotations framework to define the code. If you're unfamiliar with Lambda annotations, there's a video up there somewhere you can have a look at. The In the startup code of this Lambda function, I'm just creating a new instance of the Amazon Bedrock runtime client. And that object comes from the AWS SDK.bedrock runtime NuGet package. Make sure you're using the right one because there is a Bedrock SDK and a Bedrock runtime SDK. And it's the runtime one that you need to actually interact with Bedrock. I'm also hard coding the region to be US East 1. That's because Bedrock is only available in four regions right now, one of which being US East 1. So I've got my Bedrock runtime client. And then if you have a look at the actual application code for this Lambda function, you see that actually there's maybe 15 lines of code to actually unlock the power of generative AI. So the actual request you make to Bedrock is going to be using this invoke model async method call. That invoke model async takes an object that has four parameters, the model that you want to use, the body, the actual contents of the request, the content type, and the accept. Headers. The model ID will be different, of course, based on which LLM that you're using. And you can actually use the normal Amazon Bedrock client, not the runtime client, to get a list of all the models that are available. And you can use that to get the correct model ID. And then you've got this stream. One of the interesting things with Bedrock is the requests you pass in and the response you get back are different based on which LLM you're using. And if you go to the AWS console and to the actual playground, let's look at the playground for text generation. Let's say we're going to use Cahir and we want to make a command and you can actually interact with the LLM in your web browser. And you can also then view the API request that's going to be made and you see the properties here directly match what's in my .NET code. And you can also see the format of the request that needs to be sent to, in this case, Cahir. So you can get that JSON payload there. And you can use that JSON payload to actually create an object. So you see, I've got this here command object. 
And if you go and have a look at the here command, you see these properties are very similar to what you've just seen in that JSON payload. And of course, I'm hard coding a lot of these values to be some sensible defaults. The same applies for the response that comes back. So you see I'm deserializing the response that comes back from my Bedrock client into a Kahir command response. And that Kahir command response has two properties, generations and text, at least they're the two that I'm interested in. There are a lot more properties in the response that come back, but I'm only interested in these two. Once you've got that Kahir command response, then I can just grab the first text response that comes back, return that to my front end. And there you have it. You're building generative AI applications with Bedrock. Now, one of the things you might see with this is that you don't get that behavior that you get with a lot of the Gen AI tools where it's actually typing. You can see the response as it comes back. In this instance, you make the invoke model call and that won't return until the entire response has been generated. That's okay in some cases, but actually that behavior that you see where the response actually gets typed out is really quite cool, really. So let's have a look how you can implement that on AWS. And to do that, you're going to use the power of SignalR. And this is going to be a SignalR application that's hosted on AWS Fargate to keep things serverless. Of course, there's a little bit of Redis knocking around, but shh, don't tell anybody about that. And you've got this SignalR translation worker. Again, all the code samples would be in the GitHub, GitHub repository. And in this translation worker, you have this video suggestion worker. The video suggestion worker is going to run every five seconds and it's going to check to see if there are any messages on an SQS queue. This is a queue custom for making these translations. And actually the front end application that you saw to do this is popping messages onto that queue. The video suggestion worker is going to iterate over each of the messages one by one. And then it's going to use this video suggestion service to actually generate the suggestion. And if you go and have a look at that video suggestion service now, you see you've got the Bedrock video suggestion service. You can see exactly what is happening. So this time, instead of using Kahir, I'm using the Anthropic Claude LLM. And a big shout out to one of my colleagues, Francois Boutourouche here at AWS, because he saved me hours of time figuring out the right request and response for Anthropic. So thank you, Francois. Francois has got a really awesome GitHub repository called the .NET FM Playground, containing examples of some of this stuff. I'll pop a link to that in the description below as well. So much like in the Kahir example, I've got a custom model for Anthropic Claude. And if you have a look at that custom model, that custom model contains all of the data required for Anthropic, but also how to actually build out the actual request that I'm going to send to Bedrock. And this is a pretty particular for Anthropic. I'm not going to dive into this right now, but just know that this is the stuff that you need to make the request to Bedrock. And instead this time of using the invoke model method on Bedrock, I'm using the invoke model with response stream async. Now this method, instead of giving you back a memory stream, it actually gives you back a response stream. So if you have a look at the prompt response, this body object, same as there was in the other example, but this time it's a response stream, not a memory stream. And this response stream has a couple of event handlers that you can hook into. There's the chunk received event handler, the event received and the exception received. So what this means is you can write code to be triggered every time one of these three events happens. Chunk received is what happens is when Bedrock sends a response back to your application. And you'll see that's exactly what I'm doing here in this video suggestion service. I'm just creating a handler for this chunk received event, and that handler is actually going to make a call down my signal or pipe. So I'm going to DC realize the response that comes back. This is this anthropic Claude response. Remember the responses that come back from Bedrock are different. And then I can take that data that comes back from Bedrock and make a call to my SignalR clients using the video suggestion response and actually pass down that completion data. And what that means is that every time Bedrock sends a new chunk of data back to my application, that will then pass that chunk on straight away to my front end or whatever application it happens to be that's connected. And this gives you that behavior of the event data being typed instead of it being simply bleh, and it comes back, which is super cool. And because this is running on ECS and Fargate, this is as near to serverless as you're going to get with a signal art application. And finally, I've got this prompt response that body that start processing. You need to make sure you start the processing on that response stream. Otherwise, this chunk received will never actually 
be triggered because no chunks will ever actually be received. And this is as simple as it is to add bedrock to your applications. It really is just an API call away and you've got all of these foundational models at your fingertips to be able to build generative AI applications and add this really cool functionality to whatever system it happens to be that you are building. And that is super, super powerful. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, as always, please like, please subscribe, ding that little notification bell, and I will see you all next time for more serverless.net fun.